So this question starts out by giving us f of x and g of x. It says the polynomials f of x and g of x are defined above. Which of the following polynomials is divisible by 2x plus 3? So I'm going to show you a little trick here with this terminology divisible by, right? And really interpret what does this mean, divisible by 2x plus 3? So it has a lot of meanings. A, a few of these, most of these meanings that you've learned in school would make this question take a very long time or much longer time than most students will have on the test. So I'm going to list them out, but I'm going to show you the fastest way that I know to get there. So long division is the most common thing that most people will think about because you see division, you saw divisible, there's a connection there, right? But at the same time, most students um, who I've spoken to either don't know how to do long division with polynomials or don't like it at all. Another is synthetic division, which I think is a small improvement over the process of long division. But again, it does take time and you know, most students don't like to do it. The third thing is factoring. And you may say, well, what does factoring have to do with divisibility? Well, if you think about it, if I were to factor a polynomial, so let's say I have a polynomial, but then I factored it, and let's say I had these binomials here, right? So something plus something, something minus something, whatever it may be. I'm just making stuff up. But if one of these, so let's say this one, said 2x plus 3 on the inside, then that would be proof to me that 2x plus 3 um, goes into that polynomial. Or in other words, that, that, that the polynomial is divisible by 2x plus 3. Okay, So that's one way, and I like that way, so we're going to put a star next to that. The other way, which is going to be the most useful way here, and hopefully if, it, if you ever see another question like this, you'll know how to use it, is this idea of zeros. Right, so here's how zeros work. So you have a polynomial, and you set that polynomial equal to zero, and then you test an x value, right? Whatever that x value is, I'll just put the hashtag or number symbol here. And if that number, when plugged into the polynomial for the x, the x's, the x variables, in the polynomial, if that number makes this statement true, then, right, here's how it works. So let's say I had x equals 2. Let's say I plug 2 into the polynomial and I actually did get 0 out as a solution. That would mean that x minus 2 is a factor. Or better said, that the polynomial is divisible by x minus 2. Well, why x minus 2? Because when I say x minus 2 equals 0, right, this is why we call it zeros, find the zeros, hopefully that sounds familiar from school, if I were to do that, if I solved this, I'd get x equals 2. So I'm going to use the zeros strategy here, and um, let's see what happens. So if I am told, or if I'm, what I'm looking for is that one of these answer choices is divisible by 2x plus 3, then by using the zeros method, I'd say, okay, that would mean that 2x plus 3 it must equal 0 for the right answer. That would mean also that when I subtract 3 from both sides, 2x equals negative 3, and divide both sides by 2, that x equaling negative 3 halves, when plugged into the polynomial, should make the polynomial equal to 0 for only the correct answer. All right. So let's, let's do some erasing so I have some space here. Hopefully all of that made sense. So now I'm going to use this x equals negative 3 halves. So I'm going to simplify, right? So that's definitely something that needs to happen on this, on this question. I'm going to simplify answer choice A. So answer choice A says f of x plus g of x. I'm going to add these together. I get 2x cubed because that's the only cube term. There's no cubed term in the g of x. And then I get 7x squared because of adding 6x squared plus x squared. And then I get 7x by adding 4x and 3x. And then I get 2, right, just by the 2 that's left over. And then the way I test it is I say, if x equals negative 3 halves, do I get 0 for this polynomial? So let's test it out. So I get 2, parentheses, negative 3 halves, cubed, plus 7, 
negative 3 halves squared plus 7. And again, this is the calculator section. So you could definitely put this straight into your calculator and it would make it a, a lot easier. Um, what we'll find when you put this into your calculator is that it does not equal 0 and therefore choice A is gone. Now when we try choice B. Well, B says we have f of x plus 3 times g of x or 3g of x. So all that means is I'm going to take the f of x, right? so the first thing here, and then I'm going to add it to multiplying this by 3. Well, if I multiply that by 3, that means a 3 goes in front of the x squared. This 3 turns into a 9, right? because 3 times 3 is 9. And this 2 turns into a 6, because 2 times 3 is 6. So now when I add them together, what do I get? I get uh, still 2x cubed. Right, because there's no other cubed term except for this one. And then I get 9x squared from 6x squared plus 3x squared. And then I get 13x, which is from this 4x plus this 9x. And lastly, I get plus 6. And once again, I test out when I plug in x equals negative 3 halves, do I get 0? And the truth is, or when you put this into your calculator, negative 3 over 2 to the third plus 9 negative 3 over 2 squared plus 13, negative 3 over 2 plus 6, it actually does equal 0. And therefore, the correct answer here is choice, is choice B. So if you have any questions, please do leave a comment. Um, but most people have learned this in school through something called like find, maybe the instructions say find, find zeros. Um, find the solutions. I'm just really reverse engineering that process, basically. So hopefully that makes sense for you. I took a lot of time explaining all this, but really the actual answering of this question was just testing here and testing there. Another note that I want to make sure you know is usually a question that's set up like this one, where you pretty much are being forced to try all the answer choices. Um, usually the answer will be A or B. Not always. Um, but if you're running out of time and you notice that, you know, I'm going to have to really try every single thing here, uh, A, or A and B are usually going to be your best bets.